You, come here. You gotta listen to me. They're trying to silence me. They're trying to bury all the work we've done, everything we've discovered. They don't want it getting out there. If people knew, if people knew what was really going on out there, society, it'd fall apart. But someone, someone has to do something about it. Burying our head in the sand like a, like an ice worm isn't gonna stop the evil from encroaching further and further into the world. There are more natural beasts lurking in the shadows, secret societies and cults trying to summon Desna knows what. Regular folks suddenly demonstrating impossible abilities. Creatures being pulled into mirrors and replaced. There's even whispers of mages pulling at the fabric of time itself. Take this. Take this. It has all the work we've done. It contains all the secrets, all the plots we've been able to discover. But guard it. Guard it with your lives because all that stands between our world and the common darkness are you and this dark archive. I'm here today to give you just a narrow little preview of probably the biggest Pathfinder book to drop this year, The Dark Archive. This book is all about the paranormal. But before we jump in, if you want to add a further touch of mysticism to your games, check out the pre-order sale going on now for the Fable Maker's animated tarot deck and guidebook from our friend and sponsor, Hitpoint Press. It combines tarot, TTRPGs, and beautiful animation into one fun package. If you enjoy doing tarot or are interested in learning, these cards and the guidebook are fantastic. And if you just want some really beautiful cards to add a new layer of fun to your TTRPG games, these are perfect for that too. The Fable Makers Tarot Guidebook will teach you all about tarot and it'll tell you how to use these cards in your 5e games to create interesting NPCs, expand backstories, enhance some 5e classes with random card draws, and much more. While the book is designed around 5e, most of the fun features can be used in other TTRPGs like Pathfinder as well. Pre-order the Tarot Guidebook, deck or box it today and get a free PDF of the Fable Makers Tarot deck and guidebook with your order. And order during the pre-order sale and get everything for 10 bucks off. Shape your story at animatedtarot.com or use the link below the video to let them know we sent you. Now, first of all, the Dark Archive gives us two new classes. The Psychic, who relies on their conscious and subconscious minds to call forth occult magic, and the Thaumaturge, who uses their vast experience, their wide range of knowledge, and their collection of supernatural doodads to help their party face the unknown. But the majority of the book revolves around the Dark Archive folio. There are eight chapters, each covering a different type of paranormal phenomenon, namely secret societies, deviant abilities, mirrors and imposters, cults, curses and packs, temporal anomalies, and mindscapes. Each chapter includes new player options, GM tools, and an adventure. We're planning to have a more robust review of the book when it releases in July, later in July, but today Paizo has given me special clearance to tell you about one of the chapters in the book, all about cryptids. In our world, cryptids are creatures of legend who mainstream science denies even exist. We're talking sea serpents, Bigfoots, Chupacabra, Yetis. Now, in the world of Galarian, the range of creatures found in nature is quite a bit broader. The Dark Archive defines cryptids as not simply monsters, but rather beings that chafe against our sense of what's possible or right. Each chapter of the book starts off with a narrative, giving us a taste of what that particular topic can add to your campaigns. I don't want to spoil these for you, but you'll learn about a strange choral singing heard by fishers in the Ironbound Archipelago. You'll hear the story about a man who would spend a night in the woods on the night of each new moon near his home in Shukoro's capital city of Mukinami. He would always walk back out the next morning with a bag of gold. Each story speaks of something unnatural, a mystery. Hopefully you're kind of getting the sense of where this book is if you want to mix in a little bit of like X-Files, a little fringe into your Pathfinder games. God, fringe was so good. 
This chapter is going to tell you how you can transform regular Pathfinder beasts and monsters into your own unique cryptids for your story. And it does this by classifying them into different categories based on their origin, their transformation from regular beast into a beast of legend. So let's start off with experimental cryptids, altered through alchemy, engineering, magic, or ritual, usually mixing monster and machine. For all of these, the chapter walks you through adjusting the stat block, increasing the AC, attack bonus, DCs, and other stats by a bit here, a bit there, increasing their damage a little bit, increasing the HP by a certain amount per level, applying selected new traits and new abilities. And I'm just gonna give you a few examples of ones that I think are particularly well done and interesting. For the experimental cryptids, for example, you apply certain traits to it depending on its origin, clockwork, alchemical, etc. Here you can see a bullet that some scientist somewhere has augmented with lots of biomechanical parts. Experimental cryptids like this gain new abilities and weaknesses that parties can exploit. It can send out an energy wave at foes, draw upon its power reserves to bolster its attacks, and use its enhanced muscles to knock foes back. But the engineering wasn't perfect, and there's always a flaw that perceptive or knowledgeable creatures and party members can identify which will enhance their attacks against it. Mutant cryptids, like this really unfortunate unicorn, get their abilities from exposure to wild magic or radiation, pollutants, quirks in their lineage, Terrigenesis from eating out at the Olive Garden. They gain an unusual bane which can be used against them, like garlic against vampires or cucumbers against cats. The book gives you the examples of exposure to saffron or the sound of children laughing. When confronted with this bane, the monster takes mental damage and runs the risk of being stunned. It's a great way to tie some of those old fairy tales that the locals may read to their children into the actual mechanics of the game, which is just what you want for a campaign featuring a legendary mysterious creature like this. Primeval cryptids, like this winter wolf with an extensive rare sword collection, are ancient creatures that have somehow survived into modern day. They're larger, smarter, and more resilient than others of their kind. They also smell worse. Seriously, that's part of their mechanics. And those weapons impelled into it can hurt anyone adjacent to it. And these creatures are able to shrug off death, or in the terms of game mechanics, being reduced to zero hit points. And finally, we have the rumored cryptids, like this particularly bright-eyed but shy owlbear. This category is a bit of a catch-all, but it represents creatures of lore who have been magically changed over time to match the stories being told about it. I think it's a great way to perhaps tell the story of a village that was cursed by a hag or an evil fey creature that slowly is able to bring into existence what the townsfolk are most scared of. Perhaps an ancient crocodile with burning eyes or a basilisk that has a shifting form or a a mysterious beast that stalks people in the night and quickly slips into the shadows after an attack. And again, these are all options that you can apply to most any existing creature to make them fit the story you want to tell. Now, one of my favorite parts of this chapter is the aftermath feats. When characters have a particularly harrowing encounter or something quite extraordinary happens to them, aftermath feats are optional new abilities they can get. They're all class feats, but they can be taken by a character of any class. And as long as a character is at least level appropriate for that particular aftermath feat, then you can allow the character to immediately retrain an existing class feat to take the new one. So let me give you a few examples. For a character who has made a bargain with a devil, or perhaps won a legal case or a chess game with a devil, they can take the fourth level devil's eye feat. It'll alter the appearance of their left eye, but with that comes a devil's expertise in legal matters. You become better at understanding legal texts, become an expert or higher at legal lore, and can even learn how to discern coded messages, loopholes, or hidden meanings in regular conversations and Lizzo song lyrics. Plus, you gain a bonus on saves against linguistic effects. There are 12 of these in total and I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of a few more. If you help lay a ghost to rest, a bit of that ghost will detach and follow you around. And when you like, you can accept the spirit into your body, gaining its expertise in a skill or weapon type and weapon type. And the spirit can then interact with the world through your body, which can be a fun way to extend the life of a ghost character that the party may have grown attached to. If an encounter with cold or fire creatures leaves you almost dead, you might gain some respective abilities. If you have a particularly memorable tender date with a perky Azata, which is kind of like an overly enthusiastic, angelic, half-elf, half-snake creature who spends most of his time making TikTok videos, 
some of their infectious enthusiasm might run rub off on you, making you particularly good at making an impression and freeing your mind from being confused or controlled or other debilitating conditions. If you've been brought to your knees by an ooze, like in the slithering, some of it might get into your system, making you a bit more oozy than you were previously. If you please a powerful dragon, they might infuse you with some of their power, giving you a breath weapon and potentially more focus points. If a necrotic negative energy creature nearly kills you, you might take on some of those negative energy traits and be able to unleash them on foes. If you get petrified, it might stay with you, giving you the ability to turn your fist into stone for a particularly good wallop. It would definitely be clobber in time. But the closer you get to death, the more invasive the lingering petrification might be. On the other hand, nearly being killed by a water creature might also turn you partially to water, upping your swim speed and the ability, giving you the ability to teleport through a body of water, though no talking to fish, unfortunately. Helping a fey creature gives you some fey type appearance changes, the ability to summon a fey ally, and some very interesting things that happen after you die, which I am not going to spoil for you, and if I ever give this feat out, I'm not telling my players either until it happens. And finally, not to be left out, if an air creature brings you down to zero, you gain some air traits and the limited ability to walk on air. All of these are awesome, potentially permanent reminders of dramatic events that can happen during a campaign. And I want a ton more of them. It's easy to forget that a lot of the encounters in these games are pretty traumatic. They're harrowing ordeals, and having lingering effects from them, aside from just like XP points and random loot, makes sense. Now, what about cool things you can get from killing cryptid monsters? Well, this chapter also gives you some fun things you can craft from the things you harvest from the cryptid corpses. A bale blood draft is made from cryptid blood, and drinking it can increase the duration of elixirs you drink as a chaser, though it can lead to some unexpected side effects, just like most cocktails. You can turn the hide of a cryptid into a chaos collar, which can make ordinary animals appear as a cryptid for a few days a month, or a few nights a month. Chimera Thread lets you basically fuse together a few different carcasses into a hybrid corpse. Fun times. Interesting story potential there, though. And the Cloak of the False Foe makes you look like a local monster of legend if you want to help spread that legend even further. A hoax hunter's kit aids you in your investigations into cryptid sightings. And sampling ammunition lets you collect a little bit of skin and blood and flesh if you'd like to run some of your own test, maybe using that hoax hunter's kit or some other investigative tools. And there's one other item that I'm going to leave you to discover. And finally, there are nine class feats for druids and rangers if they wish to branch out from natural beasts to unnatural ones. You'll be able to do things like disguise your spells, impersonate creatures, avoid detection by others, demoralize creatures while remaining hidden, disguise your tracks, make yourself and your actions harder to remember by others, curse a bit of land to make it basically a trap, or make your wild shape into something, well, let's say, unusual. There's even rules for making your animal companion into an unseen cryptid creature. Now, often books like this, which offer new player options and new gameplay mechanics, leave it to you to come up with adventures or campaigns to make use of them. Or you can hope that the next official adventure path takes advantage of the ones you like the best. The nice thing about this book, The Dark Archive, is that each chapter includes a short adventure highlighting that chapter's theme. And there's information about tying them together into a short campaign if you want. The cryptid chapter brings us the beast of birch frost for third level characters. It takes place on the shore of the Lake of Mists and Veils in northeastern Avistan. Birch frost is a town that relies on the local wildlife for sustenance and to maintain its economy, and overhunting and overfishing could ruin the area. Luckily, a mysterious local entity known as the Birch Frost Beast has been a guardian of sorts against those who would overindulge. But lately, the beast seems to have widened its purview into attacking anyone and everyone. It's going to be up to the party to investigate the nature of the mythical beast and then track it down. It's a pretty hefty adventure, complete with maps and multiple locations and phases. There are, of course, a few twists and turns along the way, and there are sidebars to help you properly set a creepy tone 
shown throughout. The Dark Archive is expected to land around July 27th. We're hoping to have more coverage here before it releases. And if you'd like to see more targeted previews of it from other content creators, be sure to check out Paizo's product listing comment section and their social media feeds. And if you have specific questions about the cryptids in particular, just let me know in the comment section down below. This was a section that excited me the most as a game master, and I hope it excites you too. And for a little more magic in your game, don't forget to check out the animated Fable Maker's Tarot deck and guidebook from Hit Point Press using our link below. Now, I'm finally gonna go watch True Detective, which has been on my list for a long time. Seems like a great way to get in the mood for a little dark archive storytelling. If you'd like to come and chat, our Discord link is down below. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For now, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I'll see you next time, or will I, at the Gallant Goblin.